Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regularly here, you know I review mini photographic audio and video related products. Well, many people ask me, what camera do I use? Or what cameras do I use when I'm going out and about? And it does vary depending on the sort of photography that I plan to do. If I'm just going out for the day or even just out for the afternoon, maybe a few hours, I'll take you know, a light compact camera. Also, if I'm doing street photography, I don't really want to be obvious. I don't want to take a big uh, DSLR or one of my you know, bigger Sony cameras or even my Panasonic S5 Mark II. It's a bit conspicuous. It's, you know, you, you're seen really. So I like to take a nice compact camera. And I normally take something like the Sony a7C or one of these cameras here. So I'm just going to go through a few of my favourite street cameras. A, because they're very light and compact, and B, they're inconspicuous. So you can get into places where otherwise you wouldn't be able to get into. Uh, you're not seen as a professional photographer because they're really compact. People will think you're just a, a happy snapper. And I think you can get some great images out on the street if you were, you know, not quite so obvious as it were. Um, so let's go through a few of the cameras that I can highly recommend. Also, several of these are well under £400, four pounds four or £500 pounds a camera with a lens. Uh, certainly if you buy used, I tend to buy my used gear from one of two places, usually Wex Photographic or MPB. If you're in America, Canada, Australia, wherever else, obviously there's going to be other suppliers. Uh, maybe KEH, I know I've got a good reputation from what I gather. Um, but I buy from these suppliers because I get a warranty with the cameras. And these cameras do produce great, great images. Now I'm talking more photography than I am video. Although some of these are great video cameras as well, and I will point that out. But some of them are just, you know, more photographic cameras than they are video cameras. So now we've got all that out of the way, let's go through some of these in not any particular order. And they're all, I use all of them because I, I think they're all great. Now let's first of all look at the Panasonic G100. Now the G100 has been you know, criticised by many people as not being a great camera. Well, I completely disagree with that. I think as a street photography camera um, and an all general purpose camera, even as a vlogging camera, it is awesome. It's got your three inch articulating screen. Now, that's, not, that's one thing that I'm not keen on with some of these cameras is the articulating screen. When I'm out taking photographs, I don't really want a screen that's sticking out. I find it's a bit conspicuous. and I'm always worried I'm gonna, you know, damage the screen, I'm going to break the screen. But it does have a pre inch articulating screen, um, nice controls on the top, very lightweight, but there is no image stabilisation in the camera. So you, you really ideally need a lens with image stabilisation. At the moment I've got no lens fitted to the camera because uh, I've got lenses all over the place here on other cameras. But I can highly recommend the Panasonic G100. It's got a 20 megapixel sensor. Um, but I'd say the only two things about it, no image stabilisation and the three inch articulation screen. I pre prefer the screen that articulates just upwards and downwards. Um, but that is a great street camera, brand new, but it's only 400 odd pounds. So on the used market, you're looking at 250, 300 pounds, get a lens with it. So under 400 quid, you've got a really, really capable camera here. It does take 4K video as well, uh, only in short bursts. I think it's 15 minutes in 4K. Um, and there's a contrast detect autofocus system as opposed to phase detect autofocus system. Fine for photos. So um, yeah, the G100, great stills camera for doing street photography. And as I said, I will leave a link in the description of this video to my Flickr site where you can take a look at images taken with the Panasonic G100 along with all the other cameras. So that would be one. Another one, now these are not in any order to say, another one which I think is even better is the Panasonic GX80. And this is one of my favourite street cameras, probably my favourite street camera. Um, I've got fitted to it the Panasonic 14mm lens at the moment, um, and that is really compact. It is quite heavy, mind you, um, but the heaviness is great because it, it gives you the stability and you know you've got it. But it is really compact, and this has the, the screen that just tilts up and down. I far prefer that when I'm out taking photographs um, because I can just tilt it up like that and I can see what I'm doing. Um, 
It is a touchscreen, the same as on the Panasonic G100. Um, it's got great controls, great functionality. You can set your focus point just by touching the screen, um, or you can, even when you're looking through the viewfinder, you can set your focus points. Because again, both these cameras have viewfinders. I think that is um, really, really good. It's a nice viewfinder. You can also adjust the focus point by just moving your thumb across the screen while you're looking through the viewfinder. 4K video, full controls. It's got control dials on the front and on the back of the camera. So you've got full control over your aperture, shutter speed, exposure compensation, uh, whatever you might like, and quite a nice grip. So all in all, this is a good all-round camera. A 16 megapixel micro four-third sensor. So a pretty decent sensor, not the latest technology, but it still takes really, really nice image, images and it has got in-body image stabilization. And when you link that with a lens that's got in-lens image stabilization, you get a, what, we, what Panasonic call dual image stabilization. So yeah, very, very capable uh, camera, not just for street photography, but for pretty much anything. So um, yeah, I can highly, highly recommend the Panasonic GX80. And again, Body only around the 300, 400 pound mark um, uh, on the used market uh, with a warranty as well if you get it from like somebody like Wex or MPB. But a great, great street camera um, that'll take great images and great video. Um, now, another one would be the little Panasonic GM1. Now, this is all Panasonics at the moment. I don't know why I'm picking them up, but there you go. Uh, the little Panasonic GM1. Now I got this 125 quid. This is a really tiny, tiny little uh, micro four thirds camera with interchangeable lenses. Again, a cheap camera for doing street photography, general purpose photography. It does do video. Um, it's only HD because it's an old camera, but I can highly recommend it as a uh, stills camera, 16 megapixel sensor. And they're probably the same sensor as in the GX80 or very similar sensor to the Panasonic GX80. Um, the G100 scores from that point, it's got a 20 megapixel sensor, but the GX80 is image stabilized, um, the body is. This one has no image stabilization, but look how compact that is. Shove that in the pocket, no problem. In fact, the lens is bigger than what the camera body is, but again, Highly recommended little pocket camera if you can find one, if you, uh, if you can find one of those. But again, you see, with street photography, you don't need to spend a lot of money on, you know, the latest and greatest. Um, and you'll still get beautiful images from any of these cameras that I've recommended. Uh, and if you can pick up a GM1 at a great price, then, you know, why not? Uh, then another one is the Olympus XZ2. This is a really old camera. It's only 12 megapixels, but they're gorgeous images. And again, I'll leave a link in the description of this video uh, where you can see these images on my Flickr page, but they're really gorgeous images on this little XZ2. Uh, again, I really love this camera. Um, it hasn't got a viewfinder, but you can clip a viewfinder onto it if you needed to. But it has got the articulating screen. Um, really beautiful built camera, really, really solid construction. Um, but 12 megapixels is great. Autofocus is slower because it's an older camera, but it is a touch screen and touch to focus. So you can just actually touch the screen where you want it to focus and it will do, but it isn't blistering fast. So it's not your sports camera, but um, you know, great, again, great for doing street photography. And you've got your PASM dial on the top, just as you have on uh, most of these other cameras. And a, a zoom lens, I think it's 18 to 200, 18 to 120, something like that, I'm not quite sure. Um, but it has got a variable zoom lens, um, which I think is great. Now the other camera I'm looking at, which is quite an expensive camera, well it is expensive camera, it's at the same realm as what the Ricoh GR3 is, but it's the Sony RX100 Mark 7. But you could get the RX100 Mark 3. I wouldn't say the one or two, but the Mark III is still great. It's got a kind of similar sensor to the RX100 Mark VII, but this could be a great alternative to any of these cameras here, simply because it's got the 24 to 200 lens uh, fitted on it. It's a Carl Zeiss lens, 200, uh, 24 to 200, um, and it's got your tilting screen, the sort of screen that I like, as again, as opposed to the 
uh, flip out screen, which is like the ZV1 has. Um, and I mean, this is a you know, fantastic, fantastic little camera. It has only got a one inch sensor, but it's got all the autofocus uh, 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 algorithms that you're gonna need, uh, PASM dial on the top. Um, and I think this is, a, this is again, um, another fantastic uh, street general purpose camera because it has got that beautiful zoom lens. All the controls you want, it's got a control ring around the lens. Um, it has got a viewfinder, just a little viewfinder pops up. Only a little viewfinder, but it's very capable. Certainly capable enough for what you would want to do again for taking street photography. And that is so discreet. Look how tiny that is. That is incredibly discreet, incredibly well made. So again, you're not going to be seen as a professional photographer when you're walking around with little cameras such as this. You can get, you know, I think better images because people aren't going to be staring at you and uh, maybe even coming up to you asking what you're doing, you know. Um, they're not going to think anything. Um, so I think they're some of my favourite cameras, but the RX100 Mark VII is like an odd boy out because it's way more expensive than what a lot of these others are. And it hasn't got your interchangeable lenses, but it has got an awesome built-in lens. Um, another camera that I think has got to be worth looking at is the Sony A6000. And I've got the A6000 here. Now, body only, anything from 250 to 350 uh, on a used market with a warranty. Um, this one I actually picked up, I've had many of these. I picked this one up for £240 on Wex Photographic only a couple of weeks ago. Um, but incredibly compact camera. Uh, APS-C, 24 megapixel APS-C sensor in here. So you can fit a really compact lens. Um, I've got the likes of the um, 20 mil lens here somewhere. I don't know where it is. Yeah, so if you put something like the uh, Sony 20 mil lens on, uh, pancake lens. Now that is going to be a great street lens because that's about 30 mil in full frame terms. So you're getting a great, um, you're getting a, a, a great field of view, uh, and also a really compact little camera with a viewfinder. Now this lens is about on a used market 200 pounds, 150, 200 pounds. So you're looking at about 400 odd pounds for this complete kit. I think that is, you know, a really beautiful camera. Again, a uh, link in the description where you can see photographs taken with the A6000. Um, beautiful, beautiful camera, and I can highly recommend this. Again, uh, tilting screen, um, so it's discreet. Does take video, only HD video, but pretty decent quality video. Um, no, very little manual controls as far as the video is concerned, but it's still pretty decent. Um, but uh, brilliant street camera again it's really compact uh, quite a nice grip not a great grip if you've got bigger lenses but a nice grip for the smaller lenses so yeah that is one of my highest contenders as the sony a6000 because of its versatility and you can add to it you can add extra lenses uh, you can grow with that camera autofocus is brilliant um yeah highly recommend that camera um, and I mean, I had on it my Tamron 11 to 20. That was actually on it, you know, you know when I picked it up. Um, and that's a great street lens. Bit bulky though, a little bit big and bulky. So I probably wouldn't go out with that, would go out with the uh, 20 mil lens. That's just a small selection of cameras I use on a regular basis if I'm just going out and about taking some photographs for the day or half a day or whatever. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Hit the like button if you like the content of this video. would really, really appreciate that. And stay tuned for more videos relating to video photography, pod podcasting, so on and so forth. Cheers for now. Bye.